This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. There's always gonna be a million reasons to not do something, like to not join our private community of filmmakers so you can get better at making content and land higher paying clients. I'm just kidding. But when I told myself that I wanted to create more personal content for myself, the biggest thing that kept me from doing it was just not having someone to film me at all times. Like I have employees, but they usually have better things to do than just film me. So I had to get really good at filming by myself. And not just with like an iPhone vlog style, but filming by myself cinematically. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you 10 tips to filming yourself cinematically. And number nine is my favorite. I feel so damn lucky. It's all because. Okay. So, tip number one here is using unique camera angles. So, mounting your camera in places and angles that you wouldn't normally see in videos. Like a top down shot, your cutaway shot, you get the idea. Now, filming yourself static with a tripod can be pretty boring, so you do have to spice it up, and that's where these camera angles come in play. Tip number two is creative composition. So the most basic thing to do is actually put a grid on your frame and then put yourself on one of those vertical lines. And on this shot in particular, I'm actually using the leading lines from the car to draw your attention to the mirror and to my face. Sometimes the easiest composition is actually just squaring up with something like the back of the car. This thing needs a wash. It's all because You can also find different patterns, textures, and locations and place yourself in them to show scale and interest. All right, tip number three is shot variety. And I know that sounds kind of redundant because the last two tips also talked about getting a lot of shots, but I'll just take those techniques and get a bunch of shots. You have a lot of footage to work with. and can actually help the retention of your videos. I like to get a main talking head angle like this one, and then another unique angle of the scene, and then a cutaway shot that focuses on a random detail. Because the next tip is using a wireless transmission. Now I have terrible eyesight, so I actually can't even see my camera's monitor from here. And if you're setting up focus or framing or composition or anything like that, and then you have to place yourself in the scene, you wanna make sure that you're actually in the right spot. So instead of hitting record and then running back to your camera, using one of these actually saves a ton of time. This one's great, this one's from Vaxis. DJI also has one, and then some cameras actually have a mobile app that you can use to preview what your camera's seeing. Tip number five is clean audio. Now, if you're not talking to the camera, you can probably get by just fine with the in-camera microphone or a shotgun mic of some sort just to capture that ambient audio. But if you are gonna talk to the camera like I am now, you're gonna want a wireless mic. Mine's right here, it's just a DJI mic too, clipped up top. If you wanna go, above and beyond, you can definitely grab one of these wireless mics, a lavalier, and then use these little fuzzies to actually create a little bit of a barrier between your clothing and your skin so you don't get that rustling sound effect. But for the stuff we're doing right now, totally fine with just clipping this right here. It's not too noticeable. All right, tip number six is the gear. Now I've been filming this entire video so far on the Canon C70, but I promise it really doesn't matter all that much what you use. So to film myself in my kit, I'll have my camera, and my lens, I'll have a filter. This one is a polarizer slash mist. A little bit more on that later. Some sort of fancy mounting if we wanna get some cool, unique shots. And then finally, a tripod, because if you're gonna be filming yourself, you need a tripod of some sort. This one's the Peak Design. Got my wireless transmission as well. Okay, oh, and last thing is actually this right here. So this is actually called the PGY Tech Mantis Pod. It allows you to hook on pretty much anything. And it's a really great vlog or just film yourself type tripod. Really small, fits in the backpack, love it. By the way, after you go through those 10 tips, you actually might wanna spice up your editing too. So let me tell you about our sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks provides unlimited downloads of diverse, high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. So you can say goodbye to expensive paperclip 
pricing. With Storyblocks, you can easily add pre-made motion graphics like overlays, title animations, logo reveals, and more to enhance the production value of your videos. You can choose from thousands of pre-made professional templates for your favorite editing program. And now DaVinci Resolve templates are available in your Storyblocks library. Templates are a really great way to speed up your workflow so that you can focus on the content. And everything you download from Storyblocks is 100% royalty free with no restrictions on where you can distribute your finished projects. And content is always refreshed frequently so you're always looking through a freshly sifted media library. We actually use Storyblocks to create a lot of the motion graphic templates that you see in our YouTube videos like this title animation. And many of the sound effects and music we use in our videos also come from Storyblocks. So to get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to storyblocks.com slash full-time filmmaker or click the link in the description. The next tip is nailing your focus. And there's a few different ways to do that. First, if your camera has good autofocus and it can quickly find you in the frame, I would just use that. You might just wanna check your footage afterwards to make sure you got the shot. Second, find a spot in the frame to actually lock your focus. So that way, when you're not at your ending point, you're gonna be out of focus. But once you walk into that, bam, there you are. The last thing you can do is actually just raise your aperture so that more of your image is in focus. I'm not gonna do it here because it's kind of a low light situation, but if you don't wanna worry about hitting your mark as the actor, that's a great way to go. Okay, tip number eight is lighting. If you look back on this video, something you'll notice is that most of my shots, I'm actually shooting on the dark side of my face. Wherever my light source is coming from, I want my camera on the opposite side, like this. I try to use natural light as much as I can because shooting alone is obviously hard enough, but if it's a professional talking head, I'll use a key light. And if I'm on the go and I want a little extra flare, a little tube light is great. Tip number nine is using those extra cinematic elements. Everything we've talked about so far in this video is going to contribute to getting a cinematic image, but there's a couple extra things you can do. First is the haze machine. Now you can also get like a little can of this. It'll cover a smaller area, but what haze does is it actually creates nice atmosphere in your image. It gives it a little bit more depth. And when you have a hard light coming through a window, haze is a really cool way to actually show those light rays coming in. The other thing I like to use are ND filters, polarizers, and mist filters. Now the Canon C70 already has built-in ND filters which help us keep our shutter speed where we need it. And then I'm using the Short Stash Everyday Filter from Polar Pro. It's a polarizer and a 1 4 mist all in one. The mist blooms your highlights and it makes them appear softer and a little bit less digital. And then the polarizer helps you block out certain lighting so you can see through car windows and sometimes even give your camera the appearance of a higher dynamic range. I even keep one on my photo camera because it gives it such a soft cinematic look. All right, our final tip, and maybe this is something you already do, but a really great way to give your clips more intrigue is actually by adding digital movement in post. I use push-ins the most, so I'll mark a keyframe at the beginning of the clip, and then I'll move to the end of the clip, scale it in for another keyframe. It's a really great way to actually keep your video just moving forward. You can also add a little side-to-side -side movement, give it a little bit of rotation. Really, you can do whatever you want, just whatever movement you choose to do, make sure it adds to the video, it doesn't distract from it. Now, there are so many little tips and tricks and techniques out there, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you just gotta get out there and shoot. So hopefully this sparked some creativity and you gave you some confidence to go out and just start filming. If you wanna take it a step further beyond this video and you wanna join 60,000 other filmmakers in our community, there's links in the description if you wanna get more involved with Full Time Filmmaker. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, comment your favorite tip, and as always, if you have any further questions, please let me know. It's all